A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At daybreak, he appeared in the temple again, and as all the people came to him, he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman along who had been caught committing adultery, and making her stand there in full view of everybody, they said to Jesus, Master, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery, and Moses has ordered us in the law to condemn women like this to death by stoning. What have you to say? They asked him this as a test, looking for something to use against him. But Jesus bent down and started writing on the ground with his finger. As they persisted with their question, he looked up and said, If there is one of you who has not sinned, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Then he bent down and wrote on the ground again. When they heard this, they went away one by one, beginning with the eldest, until Jesus was left alone with the woman who remained standing there. He looked up and said, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she replied. Neither do I condemn you, said Jesus. Go away and do not sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we begin the fifth Sunday of Lent, where we're called to focus on the endless forgiveness and mercy of God. The greatest way that God shows us his love is through his mercy. Now in the story, the woman was caught committing adultery, and those who caught her and brought her to Jesus had only one thing in mind, condemnation which their law ordered. People of this kind caught committing grave sin like this, because she was guilty of mortal sin, ordered uh, to be stoned to death. Now, when they brought her to Jesus, it was as a test. But what they were hoping was that he would condemn her. That's what they had in mind, but that's not what Jesus had in mind. He had only one thing in mind, what he always has in mind for everybody. Salvation. In fact, elsewhere, he said, he, Jesus said very clearly, I did not come to condemn the world. I came that it may be saved. So he wants this salvation for everybody at all costs. I spoke about this on the first Sunday of Lent. Now, the call here, or the point I'm raising, which is uh, a very strong theme in this Gospel, is the need for confession. And everybody should avail of making a good confession in preparation for Easter. In the opening prayer of the Mass today, we have, and I'd like to read this for you. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, that we may walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. To live this charity, we need to be strengthened. We need to receive that love, first of all. And one of the greatest ways that God has given us for doing this is through the sacrament of confession. Here, he does what he told St. Faustina, and she has it written in her diary. He said, 
In the confession, I work the greatest miracle. I return the soul of the person to the spotless state of its baptismal day. So the con a good confession where we prepare well and make our best effort to confess all our sins. Jesus renews our soul completely as on our baptismal day. So it's a new beginning, strengthened and empowered with the great outpouring, or we call it inpouring, that of sanctifying graces that God has given us. He does not want us to remain in the shame of sin. There is no sin he cannot forgive. He has proved, shown this in the gospel. No mortal sin that he hasn't the power to forgive. Woman, where are they? Have they not condemned you? No one, sir. Well, neither do I. But what he did want was for her to come to know him as the God of love. It wasn't that he approved of her sin. He didn't say, Oh, they caught you committing a mortal sin, but that's okay, nothing to worry about. No, what he did say was, Neither do I condemn you. Go and do not sin any more. So he forgave her, but then wanted her to go and live in fidelity to that great love that he had shown her. Now, when we go and make a good confession, and he shows us that great love by renewing us with his heavenly graces, what he wants from us then is to correspond faithfully to those graces. In other words, doing our best to resist temptations, doing our best not to sin again. We know we will because we have so many weaknesses and frailties. But being the God of forgiveness and the forgiving nature that he has, he constantly welcomes us back with open arms, renews us, strengthens us, heals the wounds that sin do to the soul, removes their weight because every sin carries a spiritual weight. That's the past dealt with in the confession. But the graces that he gives us in that present moment renew us for the future so that we can go away and have that joy, that freedom of new life that he wants us to experience. And we have a taste of this in the psalm of the Mass today, where it says, When the Lord delivered Zion from bondage, sin in other words, it seemed like a dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, on our lips there were songs. This is what a good confession does. Fills us with that joy, that peace, and we want to express it. This is the renewal of the graces. What marvels the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. Next verse of the psalm. This must have been the experience for that woman caught in adultery. When she was freed, renewed, the joy that she went away with. This is what God wants us to have. So let us pray that we make a good confession. He grant us that grace to abandon ourselves completely to him with no fear. Not let shame stop us, which the enemy certainly would try and use. But give God the opportunity to make us new and joyful witnesses of his gospel. Amen. Thank you.